I like trains. I like train people. I even like train food. I was taking a train from Milwaukee to Chicago. I had been in Milwaukee to visit a, a, an internet stranger friend. That's someone I had met on the internet, but I had ne never met in person. I went there to meet she and her husband for the first time. A woman had gotten on the train in Milwaukee, in downtown Milwaukee, and she noticed that there were two seats up front that were unoccupied, so she moved up there just to get some more legroom. When I got on the train in a suburb of Milwaukee, I gave, went to my reserve seat and I found her in my seat. She offered to move and I said, no, 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 don't move. Just please help me find some room for my walker, which she did. I noticed she had a book on her lap and she was uh, busy drawing some pictures. So I asked her about it. She said, oh, this is my Bible journal. And I said, what's a Bible journal? So for the next 90 minutes, she told me the answer to my question. And she told me that she was drawing illustrations to go into her Bible. But she stressed that it was not the illustrations that were important. It was not what she put into her Bible that was important. It was what her Bible put into her. And she told me story after story about her discipleship pathway. What her Bible study did to help, to help her glorify, grow, give, and go along her pathway to walk beside Jesus. It was not long after I got back to my home near Washington, D.C. that I bought a, Bible, a journaling Bible and I started a, journal, a Bible journal practice myself. So sit back, relax, I have a few train stories to tell you. You may be familiar with the practice that some people have to pick a word of the, of the year that they uh, consider f throughout the year so that as a self-improvement tool. Well, one year I chose the word begin. And the reason I chose that is because I have a tendency to procrastinate and I put, I put the word begin on my refrigerator to prompt me to stop putting things off and just begin. So that word made it into my Bible journal. And there's no better place for it than in the beginning. In the beginning is the creation story from Genesis. And that's the first chapter. And the second chapter is another creation story in the beginning. I could have left it there, but I did it, took a deeper dive and I started looking for other creation stories. I found about 10 creation stories, the two most familiar being in the beginning of Genesis. But I also found uh, shorter creation stories. Some, uh, a number of them were in poetry in the Psalms. I found some in the New Testament. And what was remarkable to me that I had not known before was the references to Jesus being present at creation. So the word begin, just this simple illustration, took me much more deeply into the origin story, the creation story, and took me on a deeper dive into my Bible. It also led me to uh, some memorization of the Bible. I started, I memorized part of the, of the uh, Genesis story. You're probably familiar with it. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the, and the earth was without form and void. And God said, let there be light, and bang, there was light. And God saw that the light was good. The reason I like to memorize scripture it's because I think I love the poetic nature of the of that particular story. When it's just me and Jesus sitting on the back porch listening to the cicadas, I have uh, my memorized scripture with me, and I don't need any kind of technology to um, to allow me to recite that poetry to myself. Just me and Jesus and the cicadas. The black. Um, lines that you see on here is a, something that I practice called the art of Zentangle. They're not intended to be representative of anything. They're not intended to have an up or a down, 
but it's something that I enjoy doing and it's something that helps me as a tactile learner to put things from the Bible into my head and make them stay there. One of those creation stories is in Psalm 8 and it reads like this. When I look at the night sky and see the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you've set into place, what are mere mortals that you should think of them, human beings that you should care for them? At the time, I was, it was during the COVID shutdown, and I was staying at an Airbnb in a dark sky community. A dark sky community is an area where deliberate attempts are made to reduce the light pollution. And the end result is the, uh, the birds on the migratory route past these dark sky communities uh, tend to prefer uh, these particular areas for nesting and for, um, for their flyways. I was also staying there because of COVID longer than I had expected, so I was running out of art supplies. I asked a friend to go into my uh, supply cabinet at home, and she sent me a care package of art supplies. When I opened the package, I found that she had included some white pens and some black tiles, and one of the white pens had leaked onto one of the black tiles. Instead of throwing it away, I followed the philosophy that there are no mistakes in Zentangle, no mistakes, only opportunities. So I put that tile aside for a while until I figured out what to do with that particular opportunity. Instead of throwing it out, I'd like to show you what, what came out of that, that opportunity. I'd like you to meet Grace. I took that white blob and um, pulled some of the, the white ink out in, into more of the black tile. Then I added um, a, few more, a few more lines and added a body and added a wing. Set it aside for a while. Then I added a, a few rows of patterns that turned into a nest. And Grace sat on those eggs for a long time before I decided what to do with the rest of the tile. The Airbnb where I was staying had a beautiful balcony porch. And because it was a dark sky community, there were awesome views of the night sky. It was just glorious. I, I loved sitting out there. So I decided that Grace was going to be looking up into the sky and watching some of these um, celestial marvels that I, that I was enjoying. So the rest of that tile fell into place and became a souvenir for me. And it went into my Bible with Psalm 8, when I surveyed the moon and the stars, the work of your handiwork, the work of your fingers. Easter came, and I was still staying at that same Airbnb. I was far from friends and family, so I decided I wanted to make it special, and I decided I was going to get up for Easter sunrise service. I don't think I'd done that since I was a kid, when my family always got up for Easter sunrise. There was a mist down in the valleys, and it was a heavy, a heavy, heavy mist, and I could just see in the far distance a glow coming up in one in one part and the birds that were in all the trees down there could see <clears throat> could tell that the sun was rising because I could he I could hear the birds starting to stir and I could see a glow off in the distance and as it got lighter and lighter I still couldn't see the sun because of the fog then a big gust of wind came in and the fog rolled away and boom I could see the sun all at one time there was not a sunrise so much as there was a sun pop it was glorious that afternoon I got out my drawing supplies and wanted to make a souvenir of my Easter in the pastures there were all of these three inch high lilies lily types or maybe they were crocuses they were certain they were white and they were they were cropping up all over the pastures 
I drew one of those lilies. And I, uh, I drew one picture and I put a little bit of Zentangle on it. And just as I was wrapping up, I was writing the scripture on that tile and my black pen skipped across the white tile and created an opportunity. Now, earlier in the COVID shutdown, I had taken an online class in an art class in a Japanese art called Notan. Notan is a study in the contrasts of dark and light. So I decided that the lily tile would be a good opportunity to practice some Notan. So I took a black tile and cut it up into puzzle pieces and Lily took on a new, a new face. One of the black puzzle pieces became some good rich dirt for her. One of the black pieces became a rain cloud. And one of the black pieces covered up my opportunity where I put the scripture, um, a, an abbreviated portion of the scripture, consider the lilies of the field they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet Solomon in all of his glory is not arrayed like one of these. That's not traditional Easter scripture, but it is about a lily. And it tells us that no matter what happens, we do not have to work to be assured that God will take care of us. We do not have to toil nor spin. God will take care of us. Mm -hmm. So I rather like the way that turned out. You'll notice that these black pieces don't make a single, a, a full tile. So I had some pieces left over. Remarkably, one of them looked like a whale. So I happened to have a tile that looked like water. And I added a hinge and I had Jonah and the whale. As I told you, the reason I was doing this was not for the art. I was doing it because I wanted to take a deep dive, I wanted to remember some of the things that I learned from my, um, from my dive into Jonah. So I reread the book of Jonah. And it's a story about someone who disobeyed God and God turned him around and he ended up doing what God asked him to do. There's also references to Jonah in the New Testament. Jesus refers to the sign of Jonah in a very serious situation where he is trying to tell the Pharisees who are pressuring him for a sign of his authority. They say, what is it? Give us a sign, a miraculous sign of your authority that you are the Messiah. And he said, the only sign that I will give you is the sign of Jonah. So that took me deeper and deeper and deeper into Jonah than I ever thought I would, I would go. What I took away from that was it's important not just to take a, a story at face value. Uh, Jonah and the Whale is not just a kid's story. There's, it's, it's necessary to take a deeper dive. And as, as the Bible Project is fond of saying, it's all one story that leads to Jesus. So I want to wrap up with just one more thing. I, I mentioned when I was looking at the creation story, it, my Bible journaling allowed me to glorify God more with my memorization, my digging deeper in the creation story. I talked about how I uh, dug deeper into the creation stories and into the sign of Jonah that helped, allowed me to grow. So the last thing in our discipleship pathway is go. This is the story where Jesus walks on water and Peter says, I want to walk on water too. So Peter walks on water. And when he takes his eyes off Jesus, he starts to drown. And Jesus takes his hand and picks him up. And they both get back in the boat together. So my question on this tile is, where will you leave your footprints today?